Tales of Tomorrow. Presented by Maslin, Beauty Blend Broadloom. Tonight's Tale of Tomorrow, The Fatal Flower, starring Victor Jory with Don Hanmer. One of tonight's Tale of Tomorrow, The Fatal Flower, starring Victor Jory. They seem to have a ravenous appetite for the common house fly. <laughs> Makes a person wonder where the vegetable kingdom stops and the animal kingdom takes over. <laughs> Look at them, Merriman. The wonder of them. Wild man fiddles around with these petty problems. The vegetable kingdom is silently on the march, patiently awaiting the right moment to take over and establish their kingdom. Each day seems to get hotter. You'll get used to it. Used to it. Never. Well, give yourself time. You've only been here a month. Well, it seems like years. Never made me jump at this assignment. Must have been the lure of Brazil and Amazon. Never forget the day that Professor Hargrove asked which one of us wanted to come down and assist the eminent Dr. Alden on the Amazon. I nearly broke a leg jumping forward. Now you're... You're sorry you did? Well, the seclusion. I've never been so bored. Bored? How can you possibly be bored? <laughs> Just look at that Venus flytrap. It's kept me constantly amazed for eight long years. It's practically human. Yeah, pity you can't talk. Or play cards. Shame you don't play cards, Doctor. I'm devoted entirely to my work. Your work, yes, I know. Sitting up half the night with that thing. Uh, why, I'll... I'll never know. Trying to develop a carnivorous hybrid that size is impossible. Been fiddling around that thing for two years now, and well, it still derives its food from the earth, not from animal life. Uh, maybe it's still immature. Perhaps it's sonnenland. Well, suppose it wakes up. What good is a man-eating plant that size? Do you honestly say that you don't realize the worth of such a discovery? Honestly, no. Why, Merriman would be a major scientific achievement. Well, Doctor, I wish you luck. Luck? I don't believe in luck. It just takes patience, that's all. It just takes patience. Uh, that's a quality I lack entirely. Oh, feeding these little devils gives me an appetite. About supper time, isn't it? Yes. How's the old ticker behaving, Doc? Not quite as well as might be expected, but these pills keep them in line. Oh, pills? What a nuisance. Oh. Guess I'll jump down to Bijou and see what's playing. <laughs> yes, you, uh, you do that. Senor Doctor. Mm, what is it? The mail from the supply ship, senor. All right, Gustavo, you just uh, put it down. Oh, 
Well, those letters for you, Doctor? Hmm? What? Oh, yes, yes. We only get mail once every three months, but when it comes, it comes in a package. Oh, I sure envy you. Why? If you wait until the next mail comes, you'll get plenty of letters. Uh, maybe. Huh? It'll be months before I get any letters, and what'll I do in the meantime? Oh, come now, you're not as bored and homesick as all that. I can't begin to tell you how bored I am, Dr. Alden. Never mind, though. I'll manage to live. I'm sure you will. Doctor? Hmm? How about selling me one of your letters? I'll give you ten dollars for it. What? Don't you see, this is the same as my getting mail from the States, too. <laughs> well, Marilyn, you're perfectly welcome to all of them when I finish. Oh, that wouldn't be the same, don't you see? It wouldn't be mine. I'd just be reading your mail. Uh, are you... are you serious? Absolutely. I'll give you ten dollars for one. Surely you can spare just one little letter. <laughs> <laughs> See, you don't understand. <coughs> Sorry to interrupt your reading. <laughs> oh, no, no, you, you wait a minute. Come on, come back here. Come on, Merriman. Here. <laughs> Take your pick. And you uh, don't have to worry about the $10. Thanks. I'll just uh, pick one at random. <laughs> there. Here. Here's your $10. No, nonsense. You forget oh, no, 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 forget no, 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 I insist. All right. All right, Merriman, and I only hope you get ten dollars worth of pleasure out of it. Oh, I'm sure I will, Doctor. <laughs> What's good about it? Doesn't the breeze ever stir itself up around here? No, no, I, I'm afraid not. By the way, uh, you're going to complete that, that summary today, aren't you? I guess so. Oh, um, by the way, Merriman, I read through my mail last night and I discovered that everything I expected generally got was there. You, uh, <laughs> I hope you didn't get one of my bills. No, I didn't. Hmm? I said it isn't a bill. Well, I'm... I'm glad. Uh... Who was it from, Norman? He. Oh, can't I postpone the crypto today, Doctor? I'll fold up out there in that jungle. Yes, if you want, you can take over in the plant house. Oh, great. Thanks a million. Uh, look, about, uh, about the letter. Who was it from? Boy, oh, I hate to say this, Doctor, but it's none of your business. How's that? I said... Yes, I heard what you said. You must be joking. Oh, I'm sorry, Doctor. I'm not joking. Oh, oh I paid ten dollars for that letter, and I'm not going to share it with anybody. <laughs> oh, no. Well, if you'll excuse me, I'll go along and feed our little friends their breakfast. <laughs> Merriman. Now, about that Merriman. I say, Merriman, about the letter I gave you. A <laughs> soul, Doctor, not gave. Dave, you couldn't possibly be interested in the contents of that letter. Now, just tell me who it's from, and I won't bother you any longer. Oh, I'm sorry, Doctor. That letter's legally mine. Duly bid and paid for. Well, it ceased being any concern of yours, and it's just old incentive. I no longer consider this funny, Merriman. Give me the letter. Merriman, give... I don't wish to argue. Oh. Hey! Well, this is about time for a little nap. No, no, give me my letter. No, doctor, I wouldn't do that if I were you. Remember your heart.
You know, this time of year, what with the holidays and the promise of the new year, our attention seems to center more than ever on the home. And of course, nothing brings to the home more cheerful warmth, more glowing beauty than quality carpeting. Now, Maslin, you know, has many lovely broadloom carpets, each one designed specifically to suit some particular taste. Now, here, for instance, is Cantata a shining example of the famous Maslin mastery of the art of making carpets. Cantata is a Wilton weave, which means that the yarn is woven right through to the back, providing a hidden cushion of yarn under the pile. That, of course, ensures a longer life for your carpet. Now, this lovely sculptured design of Cantata adds an unusual eye appeal, further enhanced by a carefully selected color range, including light and dark green, gray or beige, and the exciting new beaver color, a dark beige tone, each shade, of course, chosen specifically to harmonize with your individual room. Now, one truly remarkable point about Cantata is the fact that while it's an unusually rich-looking broadloom, you can completely carpet an average room 12 by 15 with a pure luxury that is Cantata at a cost of only about $237. Now, visit your Maslin dealer. See for yourself the sheer beauty of Cantata. Choose it in any color which happens to please you. It'll guarantee for your home a cheery hearth with the compliments of C.H. Maslin and Sons, makers of fine carpets for more than four generations. And now we return to the second act of The Fatal Flower, starring Victor Jory. Uh, there's a lock on the plant house door, Doctor. <laughs> That's right. May I have the key, please? I have some work to do in there. No. <laughs> the supply ship is due here in a week. When it leaves from an house, you'll be on it. <laughs> you mean you're firing me, Doctor? That's right. Aren't you forgetting about our little contract? No, 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 I'm not forgetting. <laughs> You'll be paid for a year's work in full. Hmm. It looks very good on my record, will it? No, no, it won't, Merriman. Matter of fact, I doubt if you'll ever get a job in this field again. <sighs> Dr. Alden? If I give the letter back to you, will you forget about all this? <laughs> now you keep the letter, it's yours. <laughs> the letter is your property, not mine. <laughs> you paid for it. <laughs> it's legally yours. <laughs> Emily. 
beautiful, captivating, and wantonly cruel Emily. 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 Of course. The letter, it's from Emily. Unexpected pleasure. Madam and I have been thinking. I've decided to give you another chance. Yeah? Why? Well, I feel now that the punishment was unjustly severe. You'll just return my letter? Oh, that's awfully generous of you, Doctor. Huh. Well, I'm grateful anyway. What's that? Well, I've been thinking. I'm not really cut out to be a botanist. It's dull, boring work. It's clearly not for a man with my temperament. I've been thinking. The idea of going back to the States with whole year's pay in my pocket really appeals to me. I go into another line. Yes, anything you wish, only just give me my letter. Oh, that's my letter, no, doctor. No. Remember what no. you said this morning? It's Please. legally mine. Give me my letter. Calm yourself. Yes, yes. Madam, what I... Oh, now, take it easy. You remember your heart. Now, let's sit down. Oh. I am a sick man. Madam, listen to me. I have a wife in America. Her name is Emily. I deeply love her. I was unjust to leave her and... I expected she would divorce me, Merriba. Now, as far as I can learn to my own knowledge, after eight long years, we're, we're still married. I still love her, Merriba. That's yeah, terrible, Doc. Tom, I beg of you. Just tell me, is the letter from Emily? Please, for pity's sake, Tom. If it is from Emily, just, just nod your head. That's all I ask. Well, you can bank on it, Doctor. The minute I read that letter, I'll give you the sign. You haven't read it? No, I haven't even opened it yet. And how? How could you be so sure it wasn't a bill if you haven't opened it? Well, first place, the envelope's much too small for a bill. Then the uh, handwriting. <laughs> Dainty-like. Uh, gentle, sort of. No, it's not a bill, I'm sure of that. Tom, when... When will you... When will you open it? Oh, I don't know, maybe tomorrow? <laughs> maybe next month? Remember what you said, Doctor? It just takes patience. But now... Tomorrow, maybe. Mm. Oh. Ah. Well, off to the jungle for me. I'll be good mushroom hunting after that morning shower. Maybe I can run into some nice, uh, juicy amenatopsis. Or some chanderelles. Nothing like chanderelles fried in butter, uh, doctor? Hmm? Hmm. Hmm.
the hybrid go three full days without food. It must be ravenously hungry. Can I come in, doctor? Is this place still off limits to me? Yes, you. You may come in. You'd be happy to hear that we're going to have mushrooms for supper. Oh, by the way, I see you uh, searched my room. Not a very neat job. You knew that I would. Uh, of course. That's why I went on the mushroom expedition. Is that? Oh, of course. I always carry it with me. Why are you doing this to me? What have I ever done to harm you? Oh, nothing personal, doctor. Let's just mark it down as boredom. I was going to give you your letter back in a couple of days, but then you fired me, and, well, you know how it is. One thing leads to another. For the last time, Merriman, will you give me my letter? I'm sorry. sent you Tom Merriman. Fine mind, first-rate student, but unstable, neurotic, practical joker. Nearly flunked out for bad conduct. Needs discipline, which I'm sure he'll get with you. More later, Hargrove. Preceding program, originally telecast by ABC in New York, has come to you by special video recording. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. <laughs>